Hello and welcome to Cupcake Addiction's little unicorn and rainbow fondant topper tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how to make these gorgeous little unicorns with matching rainbow fondant toppers perfect to top your cakes and cupcakes. The things that you will need for this tutorial include some tap water, I've got an edible marker, I've also got a paintbrush, I've got a bamboo skewer or a toothpick will do, a little bit of wax paper or grease proof paper and of course my fondant or modelling chocolate. So I've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple and a little bit of white. I've also got just a tiny little bit of pink today. I've got all that stored in a Ziploc bag to keep it airtight and nice and fresh. And as I mentioned you can also use modelling chocolate so I'll leave a link to our modelling chocolate recipe and tutorial in the description box below. So let's get started. You want to take your white ball of fondant, this is about the size of a large gumball and you want to tear it in half. I always roll it into balls to make sure my halves are even, but then you want to take one of those halves and tear it in half again. Essentially, this larger one here is going to be the body and the other one's going to be the head and then the tiny little one left over is going to make the little details for your unicorn. So taking the larger of your balls now, just roll it into a nice, tight, seamless ball and then you want to take it and just rock it between the palm of your hands and you're going to make sort of like a, an elongated strawberry type shape or a slight cone, but not too pointed at the end. Rest that on your wax paper and then take your finger and just push a little indent into the front of it around the fatter part and then you want to make almost exactly the same shape out of your smaller piece which is going to be your unicorn's head. So starting at a ball, rocking it in your palm and then coming down to that sort of teardroppy cone shape but make sure it's definitely not too pointy for this one. Take a little bit of that tap water and just a tiny bit on your unicorn's body and use it to affix the head with the smaller end facing outwards and the larger end facing towards the unicorn's bottom, something a little bit like this. Now take your other ball of white fondant and tear it in half and then tear half in half again. This is going to be to make our two little back legs. So once again, rolling them into balls and then you want to roll it out into kind of like a little turkey drumstick shape if I can explain it. Then just flatten off the top of your turkey drumstick. This is going to be your unicorn's back legs. A little bit more water and less is definitely more with your water. You just need the tiniest bit and you want to fix that back leg right up close to your unicorn's bottom. And then we're going to repeat that with the other piece exactly the same. Taking your last piece of fondant, roll it out into a little bit of a sausage or a little bit of a snake. And then you want to take a sharp knife and you're just going to cut from the center because it's the most even part two little sections of that sausage. Even them out in your hand just so that they're nice and neat and these are essentially going to make the little front hoofs of our unicorn. So you just want two pieces that look roughly like that. Now with a little bit of water again, place a tiny dab on the top of each of your unicorn's hoofs. Place them gently underneath your unicorn. It's actually going to be supporting your unicorn a little bit. And while this is happening, it also gives you the opportunity to take those back legs and tuck them in underneath your little unicorn's body, which makes them a little bit more flush with the shape. All right, your last little piece of white for the details, we're going to roll out a couple of ears. So just two really small balls here. We're going to roll them out into balls and then just shape them into a little bit of a cone and squash it out to make this little triangle shape. You want to do that with both and then you want to take just a tiny, tiny little bit of pink fondant. You really don't need very much. You can also use a pink edible marker or just some pink food colouring here and you just want to make a tiny little triangle to sit inside that white ear. This can be a little bit fiddly with the pink modelling chocolate or the pink fondant so I do recommend food colouring is another great option. It's really kind of difficult to pick up. Just attach those with a little bit of water and you'll see there you've got your two gorgeous little ear shapes and they're going to be ready to stick onto our unicorn. Perfect. A little bit more water again and you want to just affix those ears, so just a tiny, tiny bit of water on the bottom of the ear and you want it to go about a third of the way from the back of the head, so not too far to the back but enough room for the face on the front as well. Both of those ears on with enough room for a unicorn horn in the middle. Now for this unicorn I opted for orange and yellow so you want to choose any two colours. You'll see my other ones, I've got pink and white and I've got blue and purple. You want to roll your two colours out into a really long thin sausage or a long thin snake, roughly the same length and mine are about the length of my paintbrush or just a little bit longer than the paintbrush. Sort of hold them together so that you can cut your lengths really evenly and cut them together. You want to get sort of about four lengths out of this, about the length of your pen lid. So now pick it up and as you pick it up you want to squeeze the top together which is actually going to stick those two pieces together and then you just want to twist them kind of like not really a plait but just a little twist so that you can get those colours twisting together. 
trim off any excess that you've got at the top because you want that to be quite sort of neat and flat. And then we're going to take a little bit more of that water and we're just going to put a dab in between those ears, sort of just behind the ears. You're going to affix the first part of your unicorn's mane by just dabbing it on in between the ears and then you want to curl it around your unicorn's chin or sort of body so that it's coming around the side and just through to the front of the hoofs. I like to attach mine at the front as well because it saves you knocking the unicorn's mane off and breaking it. So another little dab of water, pull that mane all the way around and just stick it down. We're essentially going to repeat that process again because I like the manes to have a double curl of the little bit of fondant or the little fondant mane just to make them thick and full and lustrous. So on goes a second layer of that unicorn's mane. This is also a really great way to cover up any little mistakes that you might have made in the shaping or in the modelling of your fondant. If you're not happy with one of those hooves, just cover it up with a little bit of mane. We're using the exact same technique for the tail. So once again, just a double twist of those colours, except your little bit of water's going in the middle of your unicorn's bottom. And whatever side you put the mane down on the front, you want to put the tail around the opposite side on the back. So once again, just a little dab where you've joined it, and then another little dab on the other side where you're actually affixing the end of that tail. Your little unicorn should be looking something like this. Taking the last of your fondant snakes, you just want to coat the inside length of them both with a little bit of water so that they're going to join together. And we're going to make your little unicorn's horn. So you want to twist it, but as you twist it, you're essentially shoving it towards your other hand. So you're kind of compacting that twist a little bit. You want the horn to be really nice and tight, whereas your mane and your tail were really sort of long, loose curls. Once you've got a little bit of a horn shape and you can tear off any excess at the top to make it nice and pointy, Take your knife and just slice across so that you've got a nice flat bottom to make that horn shape. A little bit of water in the middle of your unicorn's head right in front of her or his ears and on goes your little unicorn horn. Now for the eye detail, I always like to put one tiny little dot before I start here. The eyes of these unicorns are quite large so you can fill them out with that edible marker or you can use food colouring into quite a large round black circle and then you want to give just two tiny little eyelashes on the side of each eye. Just gives them a little bit more definition and makes them look a bit cuter. You want to paint just a little tiny smile, a little smiley face on our unicorn just down the bottom of the chin. Make sure it's nice and under the chin and then take your skewer and you're going to use that to poke two little nostril holes in the very front of your unicorn's face. Something like this. For the brights of the eyes or the whites of the eyes, you can either do what I'm doing here and roll out a tiny, 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 tiny piece of fondant or you can use a white sprinkle or a white nonpareil. Dip your skewer in a tiny bit of water and that's going to help your either your sprinkle or your fondant to stick. Stick it onto the eye about at the top and then use the other end of your skewer to push it down so that you give both of those eyes a really nice little bright and really bring your unicorn to life. That's your finished unicorn ready to go. Now let's get started on some of these beautiful rainbows that are going to match with our gorgeous unicorn cupcakes. You want to roll your fondant or your modelling chocolate out into another sausage or another snake and I like mine to be about the length of my paintbrush. That's roughly the measure that I give it. And the length here that you do is going to determine the overall size, so make sure that you're not making it too thick. If you want a smaller rainbow, make your sausages a little bit thinner. If you want a bigger rainbow, make them a little bit thicker. So you want to roll out your fondant in exactly the same width and roughly the same length, but as you get down to your purple and blue, it doesn't matter if they're a bit shorter. Take your purple and just position it across in like a semicircle, like you can see here, and then use your knife just to trim the bottom edge so that you're happy that's going to make the bottom section of your rainbow. Now take your paintbrush and just a little bit of water and just paint the entire outside top length of that purple so that our blue's got something to stick to. Just wrap your blue nice and tightly, being careful not to lose your shape and you can trim off any excess but don't worry about trimming the rest of the bottoms of them too much here because we'll do that all at the end. Repeat that process with your water and then your colour of fondant and then your water and your colour of fondant until you've worked your way all the way up to the red and that's almost your completed rainbow. To finish it off, you just want to take your sharp knife and you just want to slice directly across in line with the bottom of that purple layer that you put on so that you've got a really nice, neat rainbow. Now, you do want to make this rainbow about 6 to 12 hours in advance because it needs to get sort of set before it's going to stand up on its own right on a cupcake or on a cake. So you want to make sure that you rest it on some wax paper and just give it plenty of time to dry so it stands up like my cupcake here. To affix it to the cupcake, I've used one of our Sunday style swirls. I'll leave a link to that tutorial in the description box below, but basically it's going to give it enough support to actually hold the top of the rainbow up. 
to make the little clouds that have gone on it, I've just rolled some just haphazardly shaped balls of fondant, stuck them around the rainbow using either water or just sticking them straight into the frosting. You can change the proportions and dimensions of all of the things that I've showed you here today to make these fondant figurines big or small to go on large cakes or small cakes. I hope you guys have loved this tutorial. If you do, don't forget to give it a share, give it a like, and make sure you subscribe to My Cupcake Addiction for three times weekly videos. As always, thanks very much for watching.